friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my bookish life. Today I have a book outlet haul. So let's get to it. I bought some books. Okay, most of them are for my classroom. In fact, I think all of them are, but maybe not. Can't remember. <laughs> I'm very excited about all of these though. So let's just go. Um, it's already opened because I did need to reach in and grab some things that I needed uh, yesterday. So it, you know, I haven't really gone through it. I just grabbed the ones that I needed and they're still here now. Um, I put them back. So this is the one that I needed. This is a Doggo and Pupper by Katherine Applegate. Katherine Applegate is such a a great author. She is the author behind the one and only Ivan, the one and only Bob, and the up and coming, the one and only Ruby. I am so excited for another installment of that series. And <laughs> this is Doggo and Pupper is the new puppy that joins the family because Doggo is just too bored and he needs more excitement in his life, according to his humans. Whether Doggo agrees or not, it doesn't matter. This is such a cute, this is great uh, for um, younger readers to feel confident and it's really great for older readers to practice their fluency and enunciation. Uh, it's just a cute story, love it. And then this is Animal in a Furry Fiasco. It just looked really interesting. Look at this <laughs> squirrel on the back. Oh, I just love it. This is uh, Squawk of the Town, News of the Day. Uh, Two-legged friends, a lizard, a wizard, or maybe even a blizzard is about to visit Animal Inn. Word on the street is that whoever or whatever it is breathes fire and may gobble us and the Tylers, our human family, up in one big bite. We are all we are on high alert. All paws on deck. Is this the end of our beloved Animal Inn? This is actually the first book in a series, and it just I couldn't I couldn't pass it up. I think that it'll be a great one uh, to pass along to my nephew. He would love this series. So I just, the price was right. And yeah. And then I've been seeing this series around. This is Horrible Histories, Gruesome Guides, Oxford. And I've been seeing this around and it's just a nonfiction series that has like all the nasty bits left in, which is very much like the gruesome geography books that I bought earlier, but this is history. And uh, this has all has to do with Oxford University, um, but it looks like there are a lot of other books in the series uh, that I might be more interested in if I enjoy this one. So I thought that I would read this and see how I like it and if I want to get more of them, if they would be engaging for my students. Some of these books I have had in my cart for a while and I kind of just took the plum, took the plunge. This is Notes from a Liar and Her Dog by Jennifer Koldenko. This is by the author of Al Capone Does My Shirts, which Al Capone Does My Shirts takes place on Alcatraz. It's so fun, w really wonderful and heartwarming. And I saw that this was by the same author and it just looked fun. Aunt McPherson is totally misunderstood. At least that's how she feels. Sandwiched between two perfect sisters and stuck with parents who just don't get her, Antonio, but please call her aunt, finds it easier to lie. After all, only her dog Pistachio appreci pr appreciates her anyway. But when her teacher starts to see the truth behind Aunt's stories, Aunt is in for some big changes. I just, it's got a dog on the cover. My students are going to eat it up just because there's a dog on the cover. I mean, come on. And then this is Disaster Strikes, the most dangerous space, space missions of all time. Here we have a nonfiction about space exploration. This says space extra featuring accounts of both American and Russian missions during the height of the space race 
and after, disaster strikes delves into 12 heart-pounding missions that were plagued by minor mishaps and outright tragedies. I think this is going to be really good. And then this one I got for my spy-loving students. This is Mrs. Smith's Spy School for Girls by Beth McMullen. I didn't notice that this is book, so this is book three. I thought that I was getting book one. That kind of makes me sad, but we'll have to see. So it says, it says, after saving the world not once but twice on behalf of the center. Yeah, this is book three. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, Abigail Hunter is ready to level up in the official tri tri spy training school. Her best bet, the upcoming challenge in which a bunch of rival prep schools compete for prizes and for the glory of being the best of the best. Uh, so I just thought that this would be a good series to check out just because my kids love spy books. So more spy books on the shelf is a good thing. This is History of America Exploring the Great Lakes. I got this because my school is very close to the Great Lakes, and I thought having a nonfiction book about the Great Lakes would be really interesting. This is a part of the History of America series, uh, and it's by Linda Thompson. It has so many great things. We have an index. We have websites to visit, show what you know, a glossary, maps, timelines, so many different uh, features of nonfiction text can be found in this one volume and it would be a great teaching tool and it would also be an interesting read. So I decided to pick that one up. This is a book that, this is a story that I love reading with my classes. This is The Bracelet by Yushiko Ukaida. This is about a girl who is going to the Japanese internment camps during World War II, and she receives a bracelet from her friend. Um, it's really a story about perseverance in hard times and also a story of friendship and how meaningful and lasting it can be and it's a really beautiful story and I thought it would be really cool to show my students these beautiful illustrations as they read the actual short story because they are gorgeous. Uh, then this is another nonfiction by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. She wrote this she wrote the Shiloh Trilogy, and this is how I came to be a writer. So this is a memoir autobiography from her in which she talks about how she wrote about stories um, true to life, funny, and most of all, well-written. <laughs> it says um, it's how she started, how she was successful, how she failed in her writing career, and it has pictures that the author put in and just looks like a great tool that I can use as mentor text, as inspiration, or just as a fun book to read in my classroom. This is another author by, it's the second Mrs. Gioconda by E.L. Konensberg. E.L. Konensberg wrote View from Saturday and the Mix-Up Files of Mrs. Franken B. No. <laughs> the Mix-Up File of Mrs. Basil E. Frankenwheeler. Uh, and this is not one that I have heard of before. However, I just love the way E.L. Konensberg wrote. She just had a way with words and a way of expressing um, the written language so, so well. This one says, the greatest artist of his time, an apprentice with a larcenous heart and an aversion to the truth, a young duchess whose plain face belies her beautiful soul. Could the complex ways these three lives intertwine hold the key to a historical riddle as enigmatic as the, Mona, as the Mona Lisa's smile? Why Leonardo da Vinci devoted three years to painting 
to a painting of the second wife of an unimportant merchant when all the nobles of Europe were begging for a portrait by his hand. Only a master storyteller storyteller like two-time Newbery Medal winner E.L. Konigsberg could create such an intriguing answer to the puzzle behind the most famous painting in of all time. How intriguing is that? So intriguing. And then this is Dog Driven by Terry Lynn Johnson. This is a book about dog sledding, which is a topic of interest of a lot of a lot of students. Uh, one of their former teachers was real into the Iditarod, and she really made a lot of them enthusiastic about dog sledding and dog sled dog sled racing. So I saw this and thought it looked really great. Uh, so this says, ever since her ver her vision started deteriorating, 14-year-old McKenna Barney has felt out of place in the world, out of place at home and at school and even on the trail with her dogs. Now to help her younger sister with her own ongoing battle with an eye disease, McKenna finds herself at the head of her team of eight sled dogs in a race she's not sure she can even see, let alone win. For three days of shifting lake ice, sudden owl attacks, bitterly cold nights, and frequent snow squalls, McKenna faces both the Canadian wilderness and her terrifying vision loss. I think this will be really thrilling for my animal-loving students. The next one is another author pick. This is Forest World by Margarita Engel. I read Singing with Elephants a couple months ago. I want to say April. No. Yeah. April or May. In April or May... <laughs> In April or May, I read Singing with Elef Elephants, and it was just beautifully written. It's a novel in verse, and so is this one. Um, this one says, Edver isn't happy about being shipped off to Cuba to see the father he barely knows. Why would he want to visit a place that no one in Miami ever mentions without a sigh? Yet now the travel laws have changed, and it's a lot easier for divided families to be reunited. His mom thinks it's time for some father-son bonding. Edward doesn't know what the summer has in store, but he's definitely not expecting to meet a sister he didn't know existed. And then this is Bare Bottom by Stuart Gibbs. This is the seventh book in the Fun Jungle series. Um, actually, this is the one that I have not read yet. I don't think I have. Teddy Fitzroy, everybody's favorite Teddy, has his family and some other Fun Jungle employees have been invited to visit a bison ranch just outside Yellowstone National Park that Fun Jungle's owner, J.J. McCracken, is considering purchasing. But as usual, trouble isn't far behind. The ranch's endangered bison have been mysteriously disappearing. Then a massive local grizzly bear named Sasquatch breaks into the house, causing chaos. In the aftermath, Cadence McCracken discovers that her excep exceptionally expensive sapphire necklace has vanished. Was it stolen or did Sasquatch eat it? And if so, can it be recovered? And what's been happening to the bison? I just love the Fun Jungle series. It talks a lot about animals and animal conservation and treating animals with respect and love. And I just love how all of the stories come together. They're great mysteries. There's great characters in here. And I really love this series. This one was recommended during middle grade March. This is A Swirl of Ocean by Melissa Sarno. I do not remember why it was suggested, but look at this. It's beautiful. <laughs> here is... Let's see what it says. 12-year-old Summer lives year-round in Barnes Bluff, a strip of land between the ocean and the bay. It's the same shore where Lindy f found her. It's the same shore where Lindy found her when she was two years old. Ooh, as soon as Lindy saw her, she knew they belonged together, but now Lindy's boyfriend is moving in and Summer feels like he is taking over her space. For the first time, Summer starts to wonder where she came from and if she really belongs to Lindy after all. This really gives me three times lucky vibes uh, by Sheila Turnage. That has the found family element and the orphan element to it that is just, I mean, <laughs> it just draws you in. Yeah. My animal-loving students are going to love this. 
This one, <laughs> this last one, I absolutely got purely for the cover. I don't even know what it's about, and I'm a little bit ashamed by that, but not really because look at this cover. <laughs> It's so gorgeous. This is The Simple Art of Flying by Corey Leonardo. If I don't like this book, I'm going to be so sad. Oh, man, look at this. Just the cover of this book gives me Rio vibes, and uh, I love Rio. Let's see. Sometimes flying means keeping your feet on the ground. Born in a dismal room in a pet store, Alistair, the African gray parrot, dreams of escape to bluer skies. He'd like nothing more than to fly away to the palm tree with his beloved sister, Aggie. But when Aggie is purchased by 12-year-old Fritz and Alistair is adopted by an el elderly dance enthusiast and pie baker, Albertina Plopke, the future looks ready to crash land. In between anxiously plucking his feathers, eating a few books, and finding his own poetic voice, Alistair plots his way to a family reunion. But soon Soon he's forced to choose between the life he's always dreamed of and admitting the truth that sometimes the bravest adventure is letting go. Oh, it just, it really does sound good too. I mean, I, I read the description. I was like, oh my gosh, it sounds like Rio. It's got the birds. It's got flying. It's got, I mean, okay, the, but the birds aren't brother and sister in Rio, but still, holy cow, I... I'm really excited to give this book a go. And that is it. That is the end of the books that I have received. Let me know if you have read any of these books. I would love to hear from you down in the comments. I was actually really shocked by how many books I actually had in my cart. Of course, it's book outlets, so... And I can stock my classroom library fairly well. All of these books were less than $50, which 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 books for about $40. It's about $3 a book. I think that's pretty good. Um, but I'm hoping that these are gonna be good. <laughs> so definitely let me know. Let me know what I should pick up. What should I get in the hands of my students as fast as physically possible? I am very excited to get to these. That's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love it if you give me a thumbs up. If you would like to hear more from me, please make sure you're subscribed. I hope that you're finding something wonderful to read. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.